So I'm here in Madeira with the new Nikon ZA. I'm shooting woodlands, seascapes, and mountains to give it a thorough test, and I'll let you know what I think about it. Well, I am super excited today because I've got my hands on a Nikon Z8. Now, we've come to see this amazing view behind and hopefully I'm gonna shoot mountains, seascapes and woodlands with this camera and put it through its paces a little bit. I'm really excited, there's some um, features of it that I've seen, but it, I just really can't wait to get my hands on it. But the mist has come in a little bit too soon at the moment. Hopefully it's gonna die down again. We're gonna go a little bit higher, see if we can find a good viewpoint and shoot some of these dead trees on the mountain tops of Madeira. Oh, this place is just insane. <laughs> We've come a little bit higher now just to get a little bit above the cloud. In fact, I think the clouds dropped a little. It's changing so much, it's incredible. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of video of the cloud moving here so you can see it. And one of the great things about the Z8 is that it's got 10 bit internal recording of 4K all the way up to 120. And it can also, believe it or not, shoot 8K at 10 bit and 12 bit. And if you shoot 12 bit 8K in the NRAW, then it'll shoot up to 60 frames a second. So I'm gonna shoot some 8K at 30 frames a second here. And then I'll show you what it's like to punch in on it. I know most people watching my channel love photos, but I've just got to talk about this because as a videographer, it makes a really big difference to me. The rest of the video will be mostly talking about photos, but um, I'll show you some video footage from it because it is really incredible. So I've arrived to a location that's really special to me after coming here two and a half years ago and getting the epic picture of this tree here. Probably one of my favorite photos from the last three or four years. And I've seen a lot of photos from it since. I'm not saying that I brought the people here, but maybe I did. Um, obviously I realize I've got a big reach. And what I would say is that I hope there's no damage to it. I hope it's left in a reasonably good way. But what I think is that everybody should see these things. I think it's important that you know, people do come and have a look at this because it is so spectacular. I'd be really sad to think that people don't come. But if you do come, then, you know, just treat it with care and leave it as you found it. This scene is just so incredible. We just need some fog. I think, I think last time when I was here, the fog started to roll in over there, but I can't remember whether that was the morning when it was warming up or the evening. I think it might have been the morning. Um, speaking about warming up, this rock has been in the sun. In fact, when we arrived, the tree was in the sun and this rock now is so warm. So this is like, well, it doesn't get better than this really. I've got the new Z8, which um, is just incredible. This amazing tree, this amazing scene and a warm rock. You don't get that in Wales. So um, I'm gonna speak a little bit about this viewfinder because this was the first and probably the biggest wow moment I had from the camera so far really. Um, it is, a super bright viewfinder. And if you think about a viewfinder, especially if you're coming from an optical viewfinder through um, an SLR camera, then you know you, you might be a bit worried about going to an electronic viewfinder, but <laughs> it is really incredible. It's three times as bright as any other camera out there. And um, I'll put the specs here because I can't remember them all, but um, it's, it's just good because it's got a fast frame rate, so it's got like 120 frames per second continuously, or 60 frames, depending on what you want to do. And if you want to save the battery, you can go down to 60. But I'm not joking, it is so incredible. It's like, I wish I could show you it, but it's so difficult to do that. Um, but it is amazing. Now, all the things I'm saying, obviously I'm a Nikon ambassador, so you're going to think, yeah, he's bound to say that, but I will be honest. Um, if I find anything I don't like, I'm going to tell you. And I like this. Right, fog, come on. Oh, 
Okay, I'm not sure about this shot if I'm 100% honest. It's quite a complex um, composition. I've got, um, in fact, just took a shot there. So I've just got the tree, um, and I'll, I'll show you this in a photo probably whilst I'm talking about it, but I've got the tree here, and I've just tried to separate two of the elements to match the background hill. Um, the key thing here is I'm gonna to have to focus stack a little bit. So I'm gonna focus in different points. Um, it's so fast to focus. So I press there, it's gonna focus and take a photo, focus, take a photo, focus, take a photo. And I'm gonna bracket that as well. So I'm just gonna um, also shoot um, one here, 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 and here. And it's just really responsive. Um, and it's a really nice screen as well. Um, just like the um, electronic viewfinder, this screen is just super, super clear. I'm not sure about it. I think my long lens might be the name of the game and just trying to get some, pick out some detail on the clouds over there. The clouds are coming in there as well. So I'm gonna have a look around there, but unfortunately they're not quite high enough over there. Okay, it's been a bit manic that. I've just run around to the other side and there's some really nice light catching the light behind this mountain. So I've gone to about 250 millimeters and I'm just um, shooting this mountain here. It looks really, really epic. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's gonna look pretty good this. Oh, that was hectic. <laughs> That's what landscape photography is like sometimes, not always sedate. Well, it's so cold now. The temperature's dropped so much. The light is still, still looks pretty epic over there, but there's not a huge amount to shoot, I don't think. So I'm gonna go down, I think, and warm up now and then decide what to do next, whether we come back or shoot some Astro or do, leave that for a morning, because I think it might be better in the morning. But it's time to go and get warm, I think. Okay, so we're down by the sea now, and oh, it's pretty epic. I think there's gonna be a bit of a sunrise. Um, <laughs> the sun comes up so quickly here, so it's actually quite stressful trying to shoot, because you're trying to do so many things at once. Um, so I'm trying to find some element of foreground here, um, and not get wet, and just get the light on this. Uh, dynamic range exposure is gonna be important. In terms of the Z8, my first impressions, because um, I've had it now for a day, and um, it's bigger than the Z7. So that was a, a shock, I suppose, when I first put it in my hands, because I'm used to using the Z7, I quite like the Z7, and you know, it's nothing like as big as the Z9, but it feels chunkier in your grip, and I've got quite small hands. So I will, we'll see how that goes on in the next few days. I'll reserve judgment, but yeah, that's definitely something that you know, I hadn't thought thought about too much. Um, I put all the stats here of the size and the weights. The weights, it's a little bit heavier as well, but it feels robust, which is really nice. Right, so it's time to get my ND filters out and try and bracket this quite a lot because there's gonna be a lot of dynamic range here. Okay, I think I've found a composition. It's not the most amazing because we wanted to go to Ginella, but it's still closed because of Star Wars. Uh, so, um, but this is pretty good. We've got some nice waves and the foreground looks pretty good. So I've got, this is my foreground here. You can just see it. I've got these rocks down here. It's quite nice. This rock here is pretty good. And then the central rock, I think's okay. Um, I'd rather have a round rock. And then I'm basically just trying to focus stack it. This screen is just a lifesaver. I'm also recording this in 8K at the moment, but also ISO 4000, because it's quite dark. 
An ISO 4000 is one of the native ISOs for this camera, so it means that I should get a very noise-free image. Um, and I can punch in on the waves in the, in the edit. Whoa, big wave. Right, so I've changed tact. I'm going to go long and try and get low and get some of these waves in with the rays in the background. Sit on this rock. Okay, we're going to test out the focus a bit, a bit now because I'm going to put it on continuous focus and try and do some on the background and some on the foreground. It might be that I have to focus stack this. Oh, it's, it's focusing quite really well. It's such a joy to look through this screen. I'm at 400 mil now, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. I'm going to go up to ISO 400, just to be sure that I've got a fast enough shutter speed. Focus is really hard here because I've got to... Obviously, I can't get everything in focus shooting at 100 mil, I think. But So what I'm trying to do is focus on the background, get a shot, not move too much, because I'll still be able to focus stack it a little bit and then Try and get the waves as they're breaking in the foreground. That was a bit hectic, the sun came out and I went with my long lens, but I'm back with this now. One thing I've found on the camera is it's just, it's just really responsive. It, it, it's, it's just quicker to do things, it turns on quicker. I can um, do things quicker on the screen, move through the menu systems quicker, which to be honest, I didn't really see as an issue before on the Z7, but it's definitely, when you, I suspect going back to the Z7 will feel really slow now, but, um, this has been a mental 15 minutes. I don't know whether I've got anything. <laughs> but it's been... Because when you've got a new camera and you're trying to do new things in a new location, oh, it's, it's tough. Um, yeah. Who said landscape photography was slow? Anyway, this is a different composition. I think it's pretty good. I'll show you what I've got. Um, I've got this rock here. Before, there was some water that came in around, which if it does that again, it'll be nice. I've just got to make sure I don't get my camera wet and just swirling around here could be really good. And then this rock sort of mirrors the mountain on the right hand side. So I've got like nice balance to the shot I feel. So yeah, it's, it's not bad I don't think. Um, well, I like it. Oh, the water just came round. I think that was really good. I think I got it. Yes, that was so good. Please say I got that. I've got my 24 to 200 on this, which is such a versatile lens. I love it so much. Um, not as sharp as the 100 to 400, but I might go a little bit wider. Um, and I'm just focusing on the village over there, um, which looks pretty good. And there's some amazing light rays coming just above it. So, and then the waves in the foreground. So it's just a question again, timing really is really important on this and just trying to get the waves as they're breaking. And there's a lot of dynamic range, so the shutter, it, it hasn't got a shutter, the Z8. Um, it's a, it's a electronic shutter, which is, which is fine. It's, it means that um, because it's a stacked um, sensor, it means it can read it out really fast. So it doesn't need a mechanical shutter, but it's got an, it's got a noise that it makes. <laughs> so apparently you're going to be able to change the noise eventually. But same as the Z9, but it's um, it's it's funny because <laughs> I keep thinking it's a shutter noise, but it's not.
Okay, so we've parked down there at the side of the road. We can't go into the main finale because there's a lot of security guard they're filming. Um, and we're going to just try and walk in here and try and get as far as we can and see if we can find a laurel tree. I mean, um, you know, there's some pretty epic trees. This, this isn't a laurel, I don't think. It might be a laurel. It'd just be a really young one, but I don't think it is. Um, so we're going to go a little bit further, see if we can find them. And you never know. We're not going to get to the main finale because it's closed. This is Star Wars, but really want to do the seascapes, woodland, and mountain with the Z8. Okay, we found a laurel tree. I'm so excited. Um, and um, we're going to try and go a bit further. I think the direction we need to head is sort of that direction, um, where there's more like this. Um, but this is so epic. And there's a little bit of mist up there as well. And there's, you know, some cloud cover, which is good because we don't want too much sunlight. Otherwise, it'll be really difficult to take. Look at these trees, it's so incredible. Okay, the mist <laughs> was coming in and out. I thought there was going to be a little bit of mist shrouding it and really important to have the mist. It makes such a big difference, especially with these trees that just look so amazing in the mist. But I think it might be a little bit higher. So we'll go up this track, see if we can find some more trees and um, I think we'll have some luck. I'm so excited about this. I think there's something about woodland photography that I just love more than any other photography. I think I just find it more satisfying, I suppose. Um, I think it's hard to find a good photo, but when you get the right conditions and then amazing trees like this, then it's, it's fantastic. So I'm just recording this um, and you can see that I've got the main trunk there, but I, I sort of got the stream, which takes me down to this other tree, which looks really nice. And then these ferns in the foreground shooting with my 14 to 30 millimeter lens and at 20 mil, and it looks pretty good. The left, right hand side is just something a bit, not perfect there, but yeah, I'm really pleased with this. So glad. I'm so pleased for Rick, who's with me as well, um, that he gets to see some of these trees because it would have been a bit of a, we don't have much luck, me and Rick. So this is everything you probably shouldn't do in the tripod. Actually extending the, the column like this, if you need to get high is fine, as long as there's not a lot of wind, but always get an L bracket. I haven't got an L bracket here because my L bracket on my Z7 doesn't fit the Z8. It's just slightly, um, slightly bigger. So it doesn't quite fit. Unfortunately, I've got to do this, but this isn't good because your camera can swivel. So it's not good practice to do this. Always get an L bracket. The Z8 is pretty incredible. <laughs> If you look at the specs, they're just amazing. And I'll show them throughout this um, video, obviously, but it's basically a Z9. It's cheaper than a Z9 and it's smaller than a Z9, which is really important for me. Now it is a little bit bigger than a Z7. This is my Z7. And you can see that there's a little bit of an increase in size. And at first I thought, mm, not sure about that, but the weight's not massively different. And I think the size difference is for heat dissipation. I think they spent a lot of time, Nick, on working on the heat dissipation on this because to be able to shoot the video and um, you know have the speed of the camera needed that. But it just it does. I'm, I'm starting to really like the feel of it in my hand. But it's basically a Z9 for less money, and it is spectacular. It's 45 megapixels, which is you know some people might have hoped for higher. To me, I'm not really bothered about the megapixels. You know if I, I'd read light 60, don't get me wrong, but then I think you lose something in other, other areas. And I can see why Nick can have done this because I feel like, you know, the video is, is important to the camera as well. And if you went to 60 megapixels, then you're not going to be able to get um, uncropped video like they do, which, which is incredible. Anyway, this forest is getting foggy and it's so epic. We found the most amazing trees. There's some close-ups here that I, I think I'm going to take. I am in heaven. It doesn't get better than this. This is such an amazing little scene. We've got this incredible sort of lichen or moss on the rocks here, and then the stream just running through, and then these two really old 
laurel sort of garden, the, um, the distant woodland, which was absolutely amazing. <laughs> I've been sat here for about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, just waiting for the mist to drop. When I, when I arrived, typically it was really misty, but by the time I found a decent composition, it had gone. I have to say though, I've just been sat here using the screen and it is, <laughs> I know this is just not like not a big deal to maybe a lot of other camera owners from different manufacturers because they might have a screen like this, but it is so good to be able to do this. And um, it just feels really sturdy as well. Uh, it's not a screen that flips all the way around. So I just feel that makes it a little bit, a little bit sturdier. Um, the whole camera just feels so robust. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited about this scene. I just want the fog to drop a little bit further and hopefully um, we can get this and then walk a little bit further into this woodland. managed to get in the very edge of the open bit of the forest where the, these sort of amazing laurels are twisting and just on their own. It's so good, it's so good. This is such a good shot. I've, th these branches are just like all coming from the corners. It's like the camera's so nice to use. It's just so responsive. <laughs> Sounds like I'm saying that to sell it, but I'm not. I really like it. <laughs> So, so pleased. I managed to get back to this location. This is the location that I came to, I found right at the end of my trip two and a half years ago. And it was no fog here, but I just knew it created a really nice shot because the shape of this tree. Um, so I marked it on a map, which I do top tip, mark your locations on the map. And we managed to, to get here, um, which is fantastic. The mist is coming through so fast as you can see, but basically I've got this tree here going over. Um, and yeah, it looks fantastic, it really does. Well, day and a half using the Z8 and first impressions are pretty, pretty good. Um, there's, the only thing I'm just not 100% sure about probably is the size, but I'm gonna give the final opinion of that right at the end of the video um, after we've shot some more stuff tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we're up at 2.30 a.m. to try and do some astro, which will be interesting because it's got a red light mode for astrophotography um, and also you can visually you can see the stars a little bit easier so it goes into a, a video mode that allows you to see the stars so that's going to be interesting to see to compose as well right get this and i think it's time to sleep before an early morning Okay, so it turns out that it's so flipping good here <laughs> that I just can't leave. I mean, it, it's just amazing. Every corner you turn around, there's some epic shots. The mist has gone now, so it's really interesting because it's just transformed it, but the mist was here for quite a long time. And I started about three meters back and I've just progressively moved forward and taken three shots to this point here. And I just wanna show you just how much that transforms a woodland scene like this. Woodland is quite often just about millimeters. It's just little changes make such a big difference to a woodland shot. So um, I'm basically just trying to separate the trees into a nice sort of order. I, and here comes the mist again. I'm bound to miss something, but um, I'm also enjoying using this camera. So all good.
Okay, well, after a 2.30 a.m. rise, um, we're at Pico Rivio and hoping to get some astrophotography of this dead tree that I got last time at sunrise. And it's so, so clear, so I'm really looking forward to this. So there's two really good features for astrophotography in the Z8. And obviously for me, not doing a huge amount of astrophotography, they're not things that I look for in a camera. But if you're trying to do every type of photography with this camera, like wildlife and landscapes and astro, then it's, it's really good because what it means is that um, it's got a starlight view. And what that does is it increases the sensitivity of the sensor and effectively you can compose the stars and the composition and the foreground which is really difficult to do if you try and do it on um, a camera that hasn't got this then you'll find it's really hard to do so that's like fantastic you can see it here and then there's another um, view as well which is a warm light view and that basically turns the screen red turns everything red so i'll just go ahead and do that so here you can see i've just gone in and i can just go and say i want it red and now the screen is all red. I feel like it's a little bit more difficult to see the starlight view when you're doing that. So maybe you get your composition, then you turn it to that, just so your eyes adjust and um, you know you, you don't keep changing light conditions for your eyes, which is not a good thing to do when you're out in this amazing dark sky in Madeira. Okay, so whilst the Milky Way is just a little bit lower, so basically it's gonna rotate around here. We found the North Star, which is up there, obviously it rotates around that. It's gonna go up like this and eventually be above this tree, I think. Um, but whilst it's not quite in the right spot for what I want to do, I, I'm just going to get a shot with the Milky Way sort of almost going through or just across the top of the tree. So I've gone down quite low. The reason I've gone down quite low is that I don't want to get the um, town down there in the shot. And um, this, this live view is just fantastic. It works really well um, to be able to compose it. And then I've done um, some shots with a little bit of light on it because we haven't got any moonlight. I don't think I like those because it's a little bit artificial. Um, and then I've done some shots just as a silhouette, the tree is a silhouette, but it looks pretty spectacular. Um, just to the naked eye, you can see the Milky Way. Oh my God, it didn't go better than this. It's so good. So as the sun comes up a little bit more, it's looking really nice. Got a bit of light on the mountain over there. So I'm just shooting with a 14 to 30 millimeter lens and I've got the silhouette of the tree and I'm taking two exposures, one for the foreground and one for the background. Really nice. The color, you just will not believe the color of the sunrise. It's so, so orange. It looks like I have up the saturation, but I promise I haven't. <laughs> it's amazing. So now back on the other side from th this morning, actually, where I got the astro shot and finally got some mist. So hopefully I'm going to get my mountain shot um, with the Z8. And at the moment I'm shooting in with the 100 to 400 millimeter. And it is a pleasure. I keep saying this, but it really is nice using this viewfinder. But there's so much contrast as well. So I'm going to have to put it on the tripod, I think, because I'm going to have to bracket it a little bit. Um, it's basically black mountain and white cloud <laughs> nothing in between
Okay, so there's not as much fog as there was a few days ago, but it's still really, really nice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try doing a time-lapse, um, a few time-lapses actually, and also shoot some 8K footage, I think, because the, the way that the clouds are just sort of moving is just so phenomenal. And then I'll also do some long exposures, I think, maybe, because they're moving quite fast, maybe about eight seconds. <laughs> this just looks unbelievable. The thing is, because we're quite close to the equator, we just need to wait for the sun to go down a lot more because it's so harsh to light. Um, it's almost like midday in Britain, but it's an hour before sunset. So I often talk about timing in landscape photography and this is a great example and you can just see now just over there that the cloud is starting, I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see it, the cloud is just um, just moving and creating different shapes and the timing to get those shapes right that fit in to the curves of the rocks is just so so important. So. I'm trying to um, juggle at the moment because I'm so excited about shooting some time-lapse, 8K time-lapse and, and this. Um, it takes the NEF raw files and then creates an 8K file, um, which is going to be really exciting. Um, so I'm going to do some of that, but I'm also going to try and do some faster shutter speeds of these amazing shapes being created by the clouds because I think we've got about maybe five minutes of sun left. Okay, I'm quite sad, I've come to the end of my few days with the Z8 and um, well, what are my thoughts? Well, first of all, the size was a little bit worried about it, I've got to admit, because um, I'm so used to having a smaller camera and it fits my hand really nicely. But as I got used to this more, I actually really like it. I, I don't like it more than the, the, the Z7, I wouldn't say, but it's not an issue. Um, weight wise, I don't think that's gonna be an issue either because it's, the difference is, is so small. The thing that I'd say that stands above everything is is the viewfinder um, and, and the fact it shares so much with the Z9 in this compact body um, compared to the Z9. I just I just think that that's just the thing that's attractive to me. Um, I'm not somebody who generally is bothered about getting a new camera. Um, you know, the fact that it isn't any more megapixels doesn't bother me at all and I don't care about getting more megapixels. I, I care about a camera that helps me get better photos um, and that is the usability of the camera so you know things like the button positions how the ergonomics work and then the features as well and be able to shoot videos really fantastic with this with this camera so yeah i really liked the z8 i can't wait to get my hands on one for good um, because unfortunately this has got to go back to nikon and please, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It massively helps my channel. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It really doesn't get better than this, does it, in Madeira? What a fantastic evening to end this trip on. And until next Sunday, bye. Bye.